Well, hello, you guys, and welcome back. Thank you so much for joining me for another episode of the Mr. Healthy Habit Show. Uh, Today, we are going to take a break from philosophical discussion, and we're going to dive back into weight loss and general health. Uh, Before that, I'd like, of course, to remind you all to follow me on Instagram at philosophical.reminders. I post a lot of great content on there every day. The page is ever-changing and evolving, and it's turning into something that I've been quite quite pleased with. Every time I change it, I'm happy with it, and uh, the changes to come, I'll probably be just in, just as content with, and I hope you uh, give it a chance when you, when you have a moment to, to check it out. And it's largely created to give you uh, philosophical perspectives on the days and weeks to to come ahead. A lot of the things I post on there are personal reminders to myself of things that I need to remember throughout my my journeys and adventures that come along throughout the course of the day. And now to start the show, how to lose weight and how exactly I did it. So a bit of a backstory for those of you who had had not the chance to listen to any of the weight loss episodes. I've got a few of them on there. I tend to lean more towards the philosophical stuff these days. But uh, again, today we're going to take a break from that. So I used to weigh over 330 pounds. I'm not exactly sure how much, how much more. I think I maxed out the scale somewhere around 333, 336. And um, it's a bit of a story as to how I got that way. Uh, You know, of course, it's the system of interdependency that envelops our lives, uh, you know, and pretty much shapes us to who we are. Uh, You know, a product of uh, a single marriage and, uh, uh, you know, parents divorced when I was nine. Both parents worked quite a bit. My brother and I were at home quite a lot. This story might sound familiar to many of you, and so I would urge you to take caution because this is sort of how things kind of happen for me. So, uh, when you're that when you're that young, you know, and your parents divorce, and you start looking at the situation, and you start wondering why this happened, and you know, you, I won't, I wouldn't say that you fall into a bit of a depression, but I mean, it can kind of depress your outlook on life a bit. And when you're home a lot and your parents need stuff at home that's readily available for, you know, someone who's 10, 11, 12 to be able to make and eat for him and his brother, you know, you tend to not lean towards the more nutritious stuff. And uh, let's face it, I mean, these days, anything that's easy for a kid to eat outside of fruit, you know, even fruit has its limits, but outside of fruit is basically going to be, you know, cupcakes and TV dinners and microwave this and that sodas and juices and, and, you know, things that's easy for a kid to grab and, and eat pretty quick things that you can cook in the microwave burritos and whatnot. Plus, when you find yourself in that kind of a situation, you know, I mean, you, you oftentimes you'll, you just feel bad, you know, I mean, you got your kids at home and everything, you know, you feel bad about what happened and you want to put treats in the house for them, things that they're going to enjoy, things that might brighten their day, like cupcakes and soda and microwavable pizzas. And again, you need things that's easy for them to make. So being home quite a bit, you know, it's like me and my brother, we didn't exactly have the the greatest of nutrition habits. And of course, me, you know, I was the worst one between the two of us. I mean, I ended up getting a lot of weight when I was a kid, you know, and then that put a damper on sports and everything. And that'll psych you out right there and ruin your confidence growing up as a kid. You know, if you're not, you know, the athletic kind who's good in sports, you know, which is why I've always pushed my kid to to develop his athleticism. Because I never had that. I never had that growing up as a kid. And then likewise, you know, you get off work, you're tired, you got to come home and make dinner, fight traffic. There's a world out there that you've got to fight, really, just, just to get home and make dinner for your kids some days, or it seems like. And it's easy to pick up a pizza and bring it home and go to sleep or pick up some McDonald's or whatnot. And, uh, you know, just over time, I started gaining weight and gaining weight and gaining weight. And before I knew it, I was in junior high and I was one of the most overweight kids in the class, if not the most overweight kid in most of the classes. 
But I knew then that I wanted to make a change and that I didn't want to go down this route. And as luck would have it, as fate would have it, I got a hand out from puberty, you know, uh, started high school, uh, grew about a foot taller in that time period. And I started working out, uh, playing football outside a lot with friends and walking home. Honestly, that's probably the biggest thing that did it for me at that stage was walking home. I mean, uh, the school that I went to, of course, ghetto as hell. I mean, they wouldn't let us have lockers and they ran a pole through all the lockers so you couldn't access them because kids were hiding, you know, all kinds of different contraband in the lockers. So we had to carry our books. So, I mean, I was lugging around a backpack that was somewhere in excess of 40 pounds or at least it seemed like every day, you know, and the school wasn't close. (laughs) <laughs> the school wasn't close. And at that age, you know, you want to hang out with your friends. So we walked home a lot rather than get a ride from our folks. And between those walks and puberty, I mean, I had gotten pretty thin again. I got pretty thin throughout uh, my uh, freshman and sophomore year. You know, But then as fate would have it, you know, towards my end of my freshman year, you know, that's when my mother was involved in her car accident, which I've spoken about in previous podcasts. I'd encourage you to go back and listen to those. And, uh, uh, yeah. So from there, I'm not really quite sure what happened other than to say over the next so many years, you know, junior, senior year, I started experimenting with marijuana and, uh, nothing serious at that point. I mean, just, uh, just marijuana. And uh, after I graduated high school, I started using it regularly, you know, and you don't, you don't develop the best eating habits when you're, when you're doing, when you're, uh, you know, smoking, you know, as a matter of fact, I fell back into a lot of the same old habits that I had before. Uh, you know, and at that point I'm nearly nearing the age where I'm old enough to drink. And I started doing that as well. And eventually, all of that just perpetuated into this person that was, before you know it, by towards the end of my 20s, you know, over over 330 pounds, over 330 pounds. And that's a, just a brief backstory here of, of how exactly I got that way to begin with. Now we'll dive into the the topic of how I realized it. And from there, we'll go on to how exactly I did it. Because, I mean, you can tell by looking at the image, that's not the person that I am today. That's not the person I've become. I'm a completely different person today. And I want to share with you how exactly I did it in the hopes that if you are where I was, you can also implement these tips and these strategies into your life and possibly change it as I have. So thank you so much for joining me and I'll see you on the other side of the break. Well, hello again, everyone, and thank you for joining me back on the other side of the break. And now we are going to continue our discussion on weight loss and exactly how I managed to lose the weight. So it took a while for me to realize that I actually had a problem, believe it or not, being that heavy. I mean, I knew I was pretty overweight, but I had always had this mindset of, you know, well, if the doctor hasn't brought it up to me, then maybe it's something that I don't need to worry about. And uh, at a certain point, I ended up having chest pain. This was right after my mother had passed away. I had had uh, some different types of chest pain that I hadn't experienced before and going through the stress of uh, uh, losing a loved one, I figured, man, maybe there is something wrong with the heart or something, you know, I mean, because I knew I was overweight, but again, it had never really been discussed with me by uh, my doctor. So I went in and uh, told them about the chest pain and they ran an EKG on me and said that it looked fine. But because I was so overweight, they wanted to uh, run a number of other weight related uh, tests on me to test for you know weight related health problems. And they tested me for high blood pressure, for diabetes, for cholesterol, and uh, sleep apnea, a number of other things too as well. And I remember going back to the doctors a few weeks after they ran all these tests. And I sat down with them and then he told me, well, I've got good news. 
you don't have diabetes, you don't have any cholesterol issues, you don't have high blood pressure, uh, the chest pains that you were having, we think maybe you just might have pulled a muscle, maybe it was just thin chest muscles. And he told me, but you know, the, the thing that we do see is that you have severe sleep apnea. At that point, I felt like I had just dodged a bullet. Like I had walked in there and sat with the doctor and things could have turned out much more bleak than they actually were. I mean, I was very, very close from him telling me that I had diabetes or cholesterol issues or blood pressure issues or all of the above. And as it turns out, the only thing that I had was sleep apnea. Now, I felt very fortunate and very lucky as if God had looked down upon me and said, hey, I'm giving you one more chance at this. The next time you come back here and sit in this doctor's office with us, you're not going to be so lucky. You better need you better make some changes and make them fast because time's running out. You have today and that's it. At that point, he had prescribed me a CPAP machine for my sleep apnea. And he told me, he said, you know, a lot of people have difficulty getting used to these machines. But if you can get used to it and learn to sleep with it, it will change your life. And I took that advice to heart and I worked on getting better sleep with that machine. And it it did work. It did help. I mean, I can tell you after the first few nights using it, I woke up in the morning and I felt like singing. I, it was like a different world. I mean, there were still days where I was tired, but I didn't have the severe headaches that I usually woke up with. And I wasn't as tired and I was actually able to go on a walk at the end of the day rather than just having to go home and lay down for a while. I can remember going home that night from the doctor's office and telling my wife what had happened and that I felt like I was very lucky. And that night I started working out. I started practicing uh, my, my kung fu kicks that I had done before when I was a kid and throughout my teenage years and started getting back into that. I started lifting weights because that's about all that I was able to do in the beginning. I mean, I remember uh, trying to get on the treadmill and I walked for about 10 minutes on that treadmill like the next night and my shins afterwards were in so much pain. They were in so much pain that I couldn't do it again for several more days. I remember taking my boy and putting him in a baby Bajoran and walking down the street with him and not able to make it any further than down the street and having to come back and look myself in the mirror and push myself, will myself to keep going forward along this journey. Now, when I first started, I had no goal weight. I don't really believe in goal weights. I'd never set any type of goal weight to lose X amount of pounds. I knew that I was in bad shape and that if I had just lost five pounds, if I managed to lose just five pounds, I could dramatically change my life and maybe add a few years, maybe a few more years that I'm here for with my kids. I had no clue how far this journey was going to take me. I just knew that I just had to keep going and just make progress, any kind of progress. Any kind of progress was going to be a massive improvement from where I was. And that's the mindset that I took into this. I didn't look, I didn't go into the situation with this mindset of, oh, I want to look like this or I want to be that or, or I'm going to try to transform into this. No, I very much went into this with the idea of any improvement is better than what I'm at now, where I'm at now. And so if you are looking at the beginning of your journey, I encourage you to go into it with that mindset as well. Don't set a goal weight. Don't look at pictures of what you might want to look like one day or anything like that. Look at the situation and then just remind yourself that even five pounds is a dramatic improvement and start there. Start there. Don't look at the destination down the road. Just look at the next few steps. That's really, really fundamentally how I did it, was just trying to improve on the week before. I would weigh myself every day, and at the end of the week, Friday, was the day that I was usually the lowest on the scale. 
So my goal every single week was just to be lighter on the scale Friday than I was the previous Friday. That's it. I wasn't after any kind of goal weight or anything like that. And I don't believe in goal weights. 98% of the people who lose weight gain it back. 98% of them set goal weights. I don't think it's by any kind of coincidence. Just try to improve from the last week. That's her only goal. And if if you stop after a couple of weeks and you lose five pounds, then that's still a big dramatic improvement that could fundamentally change your life. That could be the difference between cholesterol issues, diabetes, health issues, or a healthier life. Now, I've always said that the key to sustainable weight loss is small changes over time. That is the magic formula to make small changes over time and to be patient. I see a lot of people who go into weight loss and fitness and decide, oh, I'm going to go keto all the way now, or I'm going to go paleo, or I'm going to go vegan or whatnot. And 98% of them end up gaining the weight back. You can't look at this as in, oh, I'm going to change my life around in a day. And in, in one day, I'm going to be a completely different person. And I don't have to have any attachments to who I was the day before. That's not the mindset that you want to go into this with. You want to look at this as you're making small changes over time and building momentum. Now, in addition to starting to work out, when I first started my weight loss journey. I could remember every single day at I, on my break at work, I would go down the street to the liquor store and I would get a one liter bottle of soda of Coca-Cola or Pepsi or whatever and a pack of snowballs or a pack of cupcakes. And I would eat that every single day, every single day on my morning break. That was my routine. And when I realized that I had to start losing weight, I told myself, okay, no cupcakes and soda today, just drink water. But I didn't say I was never going to have them again. I wasn't like, okay, no more cupcakes or soda ever again. I told myself, wait till Friday, get to the end of the week, and then you can have your snowballs and your soda. Stay away from it Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and then treat yourself on Friday for having stayed away from it. I didn't tell myself no more. Many, many, many people who enter a weight loss journey tell themselves no more. I can't eat pizza anymore. I can't eat this anymore. I can't eat that anymore. And 98% of them gain the weight back. I have not gained the weight back. And I very much didn't look at this and say I can never eat that again. I just kicked it down the road and said, not now, I'll have it towards the end of the week. And knowing that I had that to look forward to on Friday helped my resolve to stay away from it during the rest of the week because I knew that I wasn't saying never again. I was just holding out till the end of the week. So I continued on and when Friday came, I went down to the gas station and I got my snowballs and my, my one liter of soda. And the next week came by and same thing. I told myself, don't have it now. Wait for the end of the week. When Friday comes, you can go ahead and have your, your treats. So then I was able to put it off all week. And mind you, this is at this point, this is the only change that I'm really making to my diet is this soda and these snowballs. Everything else pretty much stayed the same. It was going to be a, a process. It wasn't going to be something that I was going to rewrite in a day. This was my starting point. So that second Friday came and I had my snowballs and my soda. And then the third week, I just dropped it completely. And I said, you know what? I don't need this anymore. I didn't need it last week. I don't think I really ever needed it. I can let this go now. And that third week, I didn't have the soda. I didn't have the snowballs. And I looked at the situation and said, okay, now what else? What else can I add to this journey? And it was one healthy swap after another. Uh, me and the wife, we just took a critical look at what I was eating. 
And she helped me along the way to pull one thing out and swap it out for something else. And then you see the progress on the scale happening. You see two pounds, three pounds, five pounds. Uh, you see the weight coming off. And that is enough of a motivating factor to push you forward. That progress that you see will keep you going forward throughout your journey. The progress was really very motivating for me. And as I saw that progress, I wanted more of it. So then I started working out more and swapping out more things from my diet for healthier alternatives. And we started walking in the evenings. And before I knew it, we were up to two miles every evening. And then on the weekends and sometimes we would just do a five mile walk. Next thing I knew, we were doing those walks with a weighted vest. And I remember walking around the neighborhood with a weighted vest. Uh, everybody thought we were crazy. Both me and the wife had them, but they did help. And that is something that you can try to do if you're trying to lose weight is walk with a weighted vest. If you have knee issues or any kind of joint pain, you might want to build up to that. Either way, you're going to want to build up to it. Uh, but that is a big part of our fitness routine was walking around with a weighted vest. But I remember doing that through the neighborhood and saying, one of these days, I'm going to run this. One of these days, I'm going to run this, this, this walk. And eventually, I mean, I was running much more than we were walking. I mean, I got to the point where, I mean, I would get up every morning in the dark at 4 a.m. and go outside and run eight miles every single day before going to work and in the dark. And I really enjoyed it. But that didn't all happen in a day. That didn't all happen in a day. Me getting to the point where I was getting up at 4 a.m. to go outside and run eight miles in the dark started with me getting on that treadmill and not being able to walk for 10 minutes. I got on that treadmill the first time I tried and walked for 10 minutes and was in so much pain for the next several days. My shins were killing me. And then eventually, so many years later, I'm getting up at 4 a.m. to run eight miles. And it wasn't something that I did every, I mean, it wasn't something that I did in a day. It did, this didn't happen in a month. This was over years, over years time. I built up to this. The time will pass and you will build up to it too. You just need to make small changes over time. That's really the best way to do it. 98% of people try to go ahead and, and change their life around in a day. And 98% of the people that lose it, gain it back. You can lose it with this mindset of, oh, I'm going to just go cold turkey on everything now and start working my ass off in the gym every day. You can lose it. But good luck sustaining it. Good luck keeping it off. I can tell you that the one thing that I can say that I did differently that allowed me to keep the weight off comparative to everyone else who seems to gain it back was that the journey that I took was about small changes over time and building momentum, building momentum. That is the key. I mean, now I get up at 4 a.m. and I still go in the garage and I don't run eight miles like I used to because, I mean, you know, my knees are pretty worn down, if I'm honest with you. But I go in there every morning and I hit that gym and I'm pushing those weights and then I get on the elliptical and it's a routine and it's something that is easier for me to just do than it is not to do because I've just built up that momentum over time where I just really can't stop myself at this point. Okay, so now how do you lose weight? How exactly can you put these ideas into action to better your own physical health? Well, the first step that I would say is that we need to make small changes over time and work on building momentum. This isn't about motivation or discipline or self-control or any kind of virtue like that. All we are doing is focusing on building momentum over time with small changes. What I do now today is easy for me. It's easy for me to go home and eat salads and get up at 4 a.m. and work out because I just have built up that momentum over time. It's like there's no stopping me. Right now, 
expect it to be difficult. Expect it not to be easy. You don't have momentum to work with. Unless you've been at this for a while now, you lack the momentum. That's it. It's just the momentum that you lack. So the first thing that I would say that we would need to do is to forgive ourselves. Forgive ourselves for not being the person that we wish that we were at this moment. Realize that just as my life was, your life is a series of unfolding events and there is really nothing that you could have done to prevent the situation that you're currently in. It's too late for that. It's too late for that. There's no point in looking back and beating yourself up about it and wishing that you were someone different. In your shoes, I would be exactly where you are today and anyone else in your shoes, whether it's a fitness guru like Athlean X. If Athlean X himself was in your shoes from the very beginning, he would be exactly where you are today. All we are doing is taking in our experience and responding to it based off the experiences and influences that have entered our lives up into this point. That's all we have to go on. So if like you, I was in your shoes, all I would have is your experiences and your influences to face the choices that you have in front of you. And I would make the same exact choices. So first and foremost, forgive yourself if you're not the person here today that you wish to be. Secondly, realize that this isn't about motivation or discipline or self-control. Don't tell yourself that, oh, I can do this if only I had discipline or if only I had self-control. The problem is I just don't have the motivation. Stop that. Stop that thinking because it's not serving you. There is nothing that you need outside of yourself. Everything is within. There is nothing outside of you that you lack. If that was the case, if the case was that I lacked motivation or discipline, I never would have lost the weight. I always had that within me. I always had the motivation and the discipline and the self-control. The thing that I didn't have was momentum. So remember that when you look at your own weight loss goals, don't convince yourself that you need to find some external virtue that is outside of yourself because if you don't believe it's within you, you'll never, you'll never be able to do this. You'll never be able to do this unless you believe in yourself. You have to believe that everything is within and that this is just a matter of momentum, not some external virtue that you have to go out and find. Everything is within. The next thing that I would say to do is to get the rest of your health in order. If you are experiencing any kind of illnesses or you suspect that you might be some kind of diabetic or you have joint pain or whatnot, go and see a doctor about it because they may be able to help you uncover other things that was causing you to hold on to this weight. I never would have found out that I had sleep apnea if I hadn't have gone and seen the doctor. And if you wake up every morning feeling drained and feeling tired, and specifically if you have headaches when you wake up in the morning, go and get a test for sleep apnea. I, I can't stress that enough. I mean, if I hadn't have went out and got tested for sleep apnea and got that mask, this might never have happened. I might not be here right now sharing my story with you. Get a sleep study done. And if you can get a CPAP machine, I highly recommend it and use it, use it, get used to sleeping with it. And like the doctor told me, it will change your life. It will change your life. It will allow you to sleep better. You'll have more energy throughout the day. And later on in the evenings, you just might be able to go on that walk. You just might be able to go on that walk if you find yourself in a position like I was in regularly where you come home and you're just too drained to do it. Go and get a sleep study done. Work on your sleep and get that CPAP machine if it is something that the doctor feels is going to benefit you. Because if, and like I said, if you can get used to using it, it could be a major catalyst along your weight loss journey. Something that can really help you out quite a bit. So I can't stress that part enough. Now, 
moving on, we are all very much creatures of habit. We do a lot of the same things every day, eat at the same places, have the same breakfast, have the same lunch, eat around the same times, have the same dinner routine. So we know what we're doing and what we could be doing better and what we should be doing. So make small changes over time. Look at your routine. Look at the days where you're eating out. Look at the days where you're eating unhealthily. Look at the days where you're drinking, where you're uh, indulging in excess snacks and kick it down the road. If you are a creature of habit and every Monday you go to McDonald's, say, hey, I'm not going to go to McDonald's this week. Let's make it every other week. Let's make it the end of the week. If you usually a two drink with dinner person type of person, order water. Order water that first time and then have one drink. Don't try to change your life around in a day. Make small changes. Small changes and stick with those changes for a few weeks. Don't try to make another change the very next day. Just make one change. Just take your routine. Look at the biggest vice that you have and change that. And I don't mean do away with it and put in something new. I mean put it off. Put it off. Don't tell yourself that you can't have it anymore. The brain will fight that. If you tell yourself, I can never have McDonald's and you're used to eating it, you can already feel your brain struggling with that and fighting that. Now, if you look at the situation and don't say, I can't eat that anymore, I'm going to wait till the end of the week, you can feel your brain reaching out towards the end of the week, struggling to try to get you there. It will help you along the way. It will help you to stay away from those vices until the end of the week. And then when you get to the end of the week, if you decide that you don't need it, then you can do without it. Or eventually when you decide you don't need it, you can table it and put it away and work on the next, work on the next small change that you're going to make. If you want to work on your diet and clean up your diet, Small changes over time is going to be the key. That is how I did it. Now, I'm sure there's a, people out there or a dime a dozen that can tell you, oh, well, you don't need to do that. You just eat right, eat better. You know, I mean, I could Google how to lose weight and find 10 YouTube stars within a microsecond that all have advice on how to lose weight. And, oh, you just need to eat less and move more. But many of these people, they're not people that ever had to lose a single pound in their life. I mean, they're people that have always always been healthy. I can tell you from experience as someone that has been there and has had to lose the weight, small changes over time is the best su- sustainable way to go about this. If you really want to clean up your diet, it's one step at a time. It's one step at a time. It's one meal at a time. It's one step at a time. You just pick the worst thing in your diet and you work on that. Don't totally try to eliminate it. Have patience with yourself. Lessen it. Lessen it and build up that momentum until you can get rid of it and then work on the next thing and then work on the next thing. And then before you know it, you're going to be getting up every morning at 4 a.m. eating salads for dinner with uh, some kind of chicken and, and running. <laughs> your, your life will change in ways that you did not think possible within a year if you go about this making gradual changes and building momentum over time rather than trying to just rewrite your story in a day. You can't change the past in a day. You know, you can't say today I'm going to start going vegan or paleo or whatever. And that doesn't erase everything that you've done up to that point. You still need to gradually make changes over time to get where you want to get. Now, as for exercise, exercise is a key component in this. I mean, yeah, you can lose weight focusing on diet alone, but I'm a heart and lungs kind of guy. I love the way exercise makes my heart and my lungs feel. And you can have that too. And I highly recommend that you go for it because there is nothing like it. There is nothing like coming to the realization that, wait a minute, 
I'm not supposed to feel like crap every day. I mean, I was in a routine where I just literally felt like crap every day and I would convince myself, well, I'm human. To be human is to suffer. To be human is to feel like crap every day. That's just life. No, it's not. No, it is not. You do not have to feel like that every day. You make small changes over time and build your body back up and you will get there. Now, exercise is a big part of it. Start by walking 10 minutes, just 10 minutes every other day. Small changes, small changes. Build up gradually. Walk a little bit more the next week. If you're enjoying that 10-minute walk, then two weeks from now, shoot for 20. Eventually, before you know it, your whole life is going to be geared around getting off work, getting home, and getting on your walk and putting your two miles in. You're going to see the progress on the scale happening, And you're going to want to keep that progress and you're going to want to keep pushing forward and increase that progress and build on that momentum. And using the momentum that you have already built, you'll be able to build further upon your momentum. And before you know it, 10 minutes is going to become 20 minutes. Then it's going to become 30 minutes. Then you're going to look at it and say, you know what? I'm going to run this one day. Then it's going to become an hour. Then it'll become two hours. And before you know it, you're going to be running it you're going to be running it. And before you know it, you'll be running twice as far. But you got to go about this building momentum, making small changes over time. Don't try to do some grand exercise where the next day you're going to be like, oh man, I can't do that again. Don't build up this thing that you have to do every day where it's just this daunting task. You've got to build up to that. You don't just do this daunting task in a day of working out for an hour and a half in the gym every day. Anybody's going to get burned out of that. Nobody's, nobody can keep that up right off the bat. You don't have the momentum to do it. You have to make small changes. Small changes over time and build up to that gradually and you will get there. You will succeed. Now, I hope you found this information useful. Uh, these are just personal perspectives and a little bit of of insights as to how my weight loss journey unfolded for me. And I will come back to weight loss. We will do a lot more weight loss and I will share with you many more tips and tricks that I have developed over time, how to beat soda, how to be consistent and things of that nature. So for now, I want to thank you all so very much for joining me here and listening to my show. Follow me on Instagram at philosophical.reminders for daily inspirational posts, daily quotes, and things to help you get your mind right for the week ahead. Follow me wherever you're listening listening to this podcast. Please subscribe and go back and take a look at my other episodes. Thank you guys for joining me. You guys have a good one. Take care.